Welcome back to Kathy Meadows. I tried to make this video this morning. Ended up being about 20 minutes of incoherent ramblings. Uh, I want this video to be about why I chose sheep. My thought process behind getting the sheep. Um, pros and cons, as I see it, of owning a small flock of sheep. And whether or not in the future... I would do it again, or if I would chick, pick a different animal. So, anyway, this morning I made about a 20 minute video. I was also trying to um, move my fences. Cupcake, no! Sorry, my livestock guardian dog is trying to play with the sheep. She's not allowed to play with her livestock. Um, her job is to work and protect them. You may have seen in some of my other videos that Cupcake had a stick hanging around her collar. I don't know if you could see that. Could you see that? That's Cupcake. She's young. Her stick was called a dangle stick. A dangle stick is a stick that hangs from the collar right around their elbow level that bonks them in the elbow when they go to chasing or playing too hard, makes it harder for them to chase the animals. Cupcake's about a year and a half old. She's a little young to be trusted with the sheep without a dangle stick or on a tether. She doesn't hurt them, but she has been trying to play with them uh, just now, as I noticed. She needs to get her dangle stick back, but I've got to find it. Anyway, so I'm going to try to do a little shorter video. Maybe I can make it under 20 minutes. Um, primary reason I chose sheep at the time when I picked sheep was because of my small acreage. It's 10 acres now. It was one and a half acres when I started with sheep. So my thought process primarily was... Sorry, turning the lights on. My thought process primarily was focused on I did not have enough acreage to raise large animals. I wanted to raise some livestock. I hate mowing, mowing grass. And so I wanted an animal to help me eat my, help me eat the grass and my and my small acreage that I had. At the small acreage I had, I wanted somebody to help me eat the grass. In my area of the country, the rule of thumb is roughly, roughly one acre per cow per year. And I only have one acre. Cows, like sheep, are herd animals. So you need more than one for them to be happy. And I just simply did not have enough grass to raise two to three full-size meat cows or dairy cows. Um, so I opted to go with sheep, a much smaller animal, easier to handle. Um, one of the other reasons I went with sheep was because I have zero experience with livestock. Um, if I made a mistake and hurt the animal somehow by doing something wrong, I would have less money invested in the animal. I paid $150 each for my first two sheep. Um, I don't know what two cows would have cost me at the time, but it would have been much more, obviously. Um, and if I was to make a mistake and the cow was to uh, hurt me, the, the chance of a substantial amount of damage being done to me was much greater with cows than it would be than it would be with sheep. So that was my initial thought process in picking sheep. I did not pick goats over sheep. 
I did not pick goats over sheep because I had heard that goats were significantly harder to keep fenced. <clears throat> that they would get out of a fence, that the only way you could keep a, a goat in a fence is if the fence was watertight. I've since gotten goats and found that to be at least partially true. Now I'm trying to do my evening chores. I've got a bucket of feed here for the animals. I'll let you see how I have their troughs set up. I have two troughs and a line lined up next to the electric fence. That way I can step over the fence to keep from being mauled. And then I can just come and pour All right, so I can pour a bucket of feed out for the animals. It doesn't always work right. I have one sheep that has a broken leg, had a broken leg. I suspect that the broken leg was from one of the cows or the horse stepping on her at the feeding trough. I was able to splint it. We were able to save her and she's back up and moving and going. It was a uh, a whole nother story. I would say that this is not ideal. But it works for me right now until I can come up with better. Um, ideally, I would like to rotate my cows through my pasture with my sheep behind them. And then uh, meat chickens or egg chickens in a chicken tractor uh, behind them to help spread their manure. That's another, that'll be another episode. Um, so I did not want goats back to my point because goats are harder to keep in a fence. I didn't want my goats climbing on my neighbor's truck. I didn't want my goats getting out of my fence constantly and causing me heartache. Um, ironically, within 24 hours of getting sheep, they got out of my fence caused me heartache. If you haven't seen the episode on mistakes I made in fencing, it, it was a short version. It was a, an eight-hour day of chasing two, two sheep through Nesbitt, Mississippi with little to no help. Um, we eventually wrangled them and got them back, but it was, a, it was quite a headache. Um, that being said, since then, it has been much easier to keep my sheep in, and I eventually got goats it's much easier to keep the fence, uh, sheep fenced in than it has been the goats. One of the pros, as I see it, pros and cons, one of the pros of sheep is their breeding. They usually have twins. Sometimes they have singles. Usually the singles are related to nutrition, sometimes genetics and age. So as they grow uh, several years of maturity, they're more likely to have twins as they get... Um, healthier size, get good body condition, and have plenty of food and forage. They tend to have twins, and as you cull genetics um, out for singles and in for twins, you more likely have twins. I think the average is somewhere for most uh, nation nationwide here is somewhere around 1.5 babies per sheep per lambing. Um, so the finances on that, right now sheep in my area go for an average of about $200 a lamb for a weaned lamb. So 10 sheep, uh, 10 ewes with one ram, 10 ewes should have potentially 15 babies a year. So that's potentially, um, whatever 15 times 200 is, uh, $3,000 I think is what that works out to. $3,000 from the 10 ewes, 10 ewes eat roughly the same amount of grass as one cow, as one adult cow. So to me, um, without having done the math, it appears the feed conversion, the, the amount of profit per grass acre that you get is, is, is higher with sheep than it would be with cows. I have cows 
not for profit. I have cows because I like to eat beef. I have cows because I wanted to learn about cows. I have sheep because I love the sheep and for the profit in the sheep compared to cows. There does seem to be the same amount of profit in goats, but um, pardon my language. If you've got your kids, um, goats are a pain in the ass. Um, we've had goats a few times. Now, the first time we had to give him away because he was a jerk. This time, they're significantly sweeter, but they're still a pain in the ass. Um, that's not for everybody. That's for me. Some people love goats. The cons of sheep. Um, I've heard it said that from the day they're born, sheep spend every day of their life trying to die. That seems to be true. Um, you've, met tw you've met Lollipop. Lollipop. Um, has tried to eat herself to death when she busted into the room with the feed. Lollipop has given herself listeria and almost died. Um, they will regularly get themselves into situations where they could get hurt. This is Lollipop. Hey, Lollipop. Lollipop was a bottle baby. She's very, very sweet, very loving. Um, keeps trying to die. You heard about the sheep with the broken leg. Everything I read online from the veterinary manual said, put it down. There's, there's no saving a broken leg from a sheep. You can see her limping. That's ding dong. Most of our animals are named after food. Uh, thanks to our five-year-old that names them. Ding dong's the one that had the broken leg. Fortunately, I'm an ER nurse. I'm comfortable splinting animals. Uh, well, I'm comfortable splinting people. So I splinted the animal the best I could. Um, that'll be another episode. If anybody's got questions about splinting a broken leg in a sheep and what worked for me, feel free to um, hit me up. I'll answer those questions. Um, Ding Dong got, uh, got her foot stepped on. Regularly with our feeding situation, I'm concerned that one of our animals is going to get hurt by the cows or the horse. Um, so the cons to me with the sheep is you have to have an attentive eye to the health conditions of the sheep. They hide their illnesses very well, um, but they do get ill and you may not notice it until they were knocking on death's door. Um, several of my friends that have sheep have had major problems with worms because of their, because of their uh, management system. You have to have, if you, if you don't rotate your, your grazing, you do have to have a regular worming schedule. Um, that's not considered best practice now uh, amongst all the information that I've read, um, but it is still regularly done with many successful sheep producers. Um, but now I think best practice is rotational grazing with only worming the sick sheep. That being said, I've only had to worm one. I'm not a big time sheep producer. I do intensively manage my sheep, rotationally graze and keep a very close eye on them. And uh, that's led me to only have to worm one sheep in, in three years. Um, I've heard it said on a, one of my favorite sheep podcasts that uh, you get a grace period of a few years. So there's a good possibility next year I'll have a terrible worm problem if they're right. And, and they probably are because they're big time sheep producers. That's a quick on the pros and cons of sheep. Um, they are they are very flighty animals. That would be another con. Um, when they get spooked, they're very hard to get control of again. Um, that being said, because they flock, that can make them a little easier to work once you get the, uh, the nature down of the animal. Uh, they're more easily worked with dogs. I don't, I don't have a dog that I work them with. And they... Uh, they are um, significantly smaller and easier to deal with than cows. Um, we will, I will show you happily on another episode how, how it is that one person can handle the sheep. Um, would I do it again was the last question I wanted to answer. Absolutely. I love my sheep. I like handling them. They are, they are um, my favorite animal on the farm, almost without exception. Um, they're, they're really amusing to watch. They all have their own uh, personality and, and 
even though they're all sheep and they all have similar behavior, they're all individuals. And, and it's amazing to watch that and see them. Um, they're just absolutely funny, amusing animals that I, I love taking care of. They have been easy for me to sell in this area of the country. So they have not been profitable yet because I'm still catching up on infrastructure. Um, but they have been easy to sell. Uh, and they they should become profitable in the next year or two as I get the appropriate numbers of sheep to continue to raise them. Um, so on that note, we're at 15 minutes. It's a little bit less than 20. Hopefully that if you're looking into getting sheep, this video has helped you. I absolutely would recommend it to anybody that's interested. You can start, I would say start with three. I started with two, one of them got hurt and died and that left me with one depressed sheep that I was in a scramble to find a companion for. Um, I would say get three. That way if something happens to one because sheep are looking to die, um, you'll still have two so you won't be in a rush to get a companion. Uh, they, they, you need at least two or they will not be happy. Um, but absolutely give sheep a try if you're interested. I love them. It's been a great, um, great learning experience for me to have sheep. Uh, it opened a whole world of opportunity with livestock and, and my comfort with caring for ruminant animals. Um, as always, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please hit me up and please subscribe to my channel if you're interested. Thank you.